All right, Adam Trigger here, Wager Talk, back with another college basketball preview. This is 30 previews in 30 days, and these are betting previews. So by the end of these, we want you to have a good idea of how you can make money playing either on or against the team that we're talking about, totals, so on and so forth. And I think I've got as profitable of a preview as we're going to have this year because this is a team, the Brown Bears. We're heading to the Ivy League today to talk Brown. And I, I am, I think that the, the way that they're going to be priced this year, it, we're going to be able to make a lot of money with this team. And you can take some of that money and head on over to wagertalk.com and check out a very good college basketball season long special that we have. Uh, if you jump in with the early bird pricing using coupon code TRIG CBB, T R I G C B B, uh, you get all of my picks from November 4th when we tip things off all the way through one shiny moment on that. Uh, the amazing Monday night in April when we crown a champion. So I'm looking forward to the 2024-2025 season, uh, up 48 units over the over the course of the last two years. That's a net from the last two seasons. So uh, it's been good. And, and like I said, I really can't wait for this year to start. I hope we have a great season. And I think I'm going to give you uh, a, a way to make some money here today in an Ivy League team that I don't think it is priced or is going to be priced appropriately. And we're going to talk about the Brown Bears. And, and the reason I say that is if in the context of the Ivy League and the and the way these teams are sort of priced out, if Princeton or Yale, for example, was bringing back the team that Brown is bringing back this year, I, I think that they would be like, you know, it, it would be like the, you know, just a – a shoe in that they would either be number one in the league or, or right up there in, in the, you know, competing for a league title. And I just don't think Brown gets, gets that type of respect. They haven't had the winning culture in the Ivy from a basketball standpoint, like some of their, uh, some of their counterparts have the Princeton's, the Yale's, the Cornell's, the Harvard's, you know, those are, those have been kind of the, the haves in this conference for a long time. Brown can, tends to get grouped with like Dartmouth, uh, you know, Columbia. There's only eight teams in the Ivy. I'm, I'm forgetting one one off the top of my head right now. But the point is, Brown gets, you know, they, they tend to not have that same kind of, oh, Penn is the other one. Um, they do, they just don't get that, that respect for the name on the front of their jersey. But this year they should because this Brown team peaked at the right time last year. And, I, I mean, if you go back to Ivy League tournament, they were 30 seconds away from an NCAA tournament bid. They had a 60-54 to 54 lead on Yale with, thirty, I believe, 30 seconds to go, and they managed to lose the game. Uh, but they were a big underdog. They sort of played their way into that four seed last year. But they finished the year 7-1, and one, and they really sort of had – they they figured out finally figured out the mix of players they wanted on the court. There were you know th- there was some changes that Coach Martin made there. I, I would say like mid February that propelled them to a seven and one finish, and, and and oh so close to stealing that NCAA tournament bid uh, on Ivy uh, Ivy Conference tournament weekend. Um, you know they pull the upset on on Saturday and they almost had Yale on Sunday. So every it, it, the one great thing about Ivy League basketball. One of the reasons that it's still one of my favorite conferences and probably will be, you know, forever is the fact that we still get the same teams year to year. The Ivy League just doesn't get hit by the transfer portal and by, you know, by NIL stuff the way some of the other conferences do. Uh, some of these, you know, a lot of these kids are, are here for educational reasons as well. And, and so they're less inclined now, it still happens. Yale's lost a couple of guys, you know, to the transfer portal. Princeton has as well. But a lot of these guys come back and, and rosters stay intact. And, and that's what we're going to see with Brown here. And, and that's what we're going to see with Brown retaining their best player in Keno Lilly, who, you know, was someone that I talked about last year at times. I thought he was one of the best players in the Ivy last year. Didn't think he got enough respect. And he's back as a senior and without a doubt, he's one of the best players in the league this year. Again, I think if his, if I think if Keno Lilly is on Princeton or is on Yale, he's like the preseason conference player of the year in this league. But because he's on Brown, he, he gets forgotten about a little bit, and that will be to our advantage here because 
that's one of the big reasons we're going to make a lot of money, I think, backing this team uh, this season. So last year, uh, I was I, I got to see this team play in December. Uh, they played Bryant. I went out to that game and actually bet against them uh, and, and cashed with Bryant in that game. And one of the big reasons was I really wasn't fully I wasn't fully sold with Brown uh, or on Brown as a team once you got past Lilly and, and what a good player he was. I thought that they were a little bit sloppy in the paint. Uh, you know, I thought that they struggled to finish at the rim at times. Uh, the foul shooting was was really bad, especially from the bigs who who shot the majority of their free throws. So those were all things I was concerned with for Brown early in the year. But once they got to be, uh, to, to Ivy League play, they just had size in 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 the you know through their bigs that was you know bigger than than the uh, majority of the other teams in the Ivy. And and again, they really just they made some lineup rota- uh, rotation changes and finished seven and one. And I think a lot of those reasons are, are why they're going to come out the gate playing very good this year. If you go back to last year's Brown team, they, they really struggled in those November and December months, even early in the conference play and then finished, uh, you know, with winning seven of eight, getting to the final of the Ivy League tournament, road wins over Yale, Princeton, and Cornell, uh, and, and became a very deserving sort of number four team behind those top three, the big three, Yale, Princeton, and Cornell. That That's really what this conference has been the last the last couple seasons. So I think the way last year ended for Brown is foreshadowing of a, of a potentially pretty big season this year, and, and Lily's going to be a big reason why. Uh, I already said I think he's arguably the best player in this conference. If he's not the best, he's certainly one of the top five. Um, he's just a, a incredible shot maker, which is so huge for this Brown team because that is where they got in trouble at times last year. Um, you know, creating good shots. If they couldn't, you know, bully an undersized opponent in the paint, they they did take they did struggle to get open at times. And Keno Lilly is like. The, one, the, the guy that can kind of just bail you out in that scenario. Um, he's a very good three-point shooter. He has a very he has a solid mid-range game. Uh, you know, if, if Lily is at a different mid-major school, not an Ivy, this is a guy that likely gets, like, wooed away by one of the top, um, one, like a big program somewhere. He's probably a guy that ends up in the transfer portal. But again, um, you know, guys don't really leave these Ivy League schools that often. And then you get a roster like this Brown roster who's got four seniors that are going to start, five upperclassmen are going to start uh, on this team. And it's essentially the starting rotation uh, minus Anya in the post. It's it's basically their starting rotation um, from here. So, you know, very few of these anymore where you get the roster continuity of, of a team that really isn't out trying to find guys in the transfer portal. They're, you know, they're, they're bringing – in true freshmen and they stay for four, sometimes five years and graduate from this school. And then, so you get a year like this with Brown where you've got five starters that are all upperclassmen. They've all been multiple years in the program. And it's why I think that they have a chance to, you know, do something pretty special uh, this year. So in the front court last year, um, Brown was, again, they had superior size. Once you got into Ivy league play, uh, Nana Owasu Anane is back. Uh, he was one of the two. So um, Anya is the one that graduated. Uh, but, you know, I, I thought their bigs at time last year were a liability on the offensive end. Uh, because, again, Owasu Anane didn't always have the best finishing touch. You, you basically had two guys um, on the floor at all times that were horrible free throw shooters. Now, to... Anane's credit, he got better as the season went on. I, I think he ended up with a, a 68% clip from the foul line, and, and he improved upon that because uh, I would say in January at one point, he was he was shooting below 60% um, from the free throw stripe. So, so that was something that he definitely improved on as the season went on, and, and that'll be really big. Uh, I'm really looking for an improvement there from him this year because – it's huge. He he gets fouled a ton. You look at the we'll look at their schedule in a second. You're going to see Brown potentially being like the more physical, bigger team in a lot of the games that they play this year. 
and he's probably going to live at the free throw line. So uh, I'll be looking for Nana uh, Owasu Asana. It's a mouthful um, to be a better free throw shooter than he was last year, because I think that's going to just be massive uh, for Brown and, and their ability to score points outside of what Keno Lilly can do on his own. Uh, you've got three other starters, starters, Lesba, Errol, and Cooley, who are all back from last year. Now, two of those, uh, Errol and Lesba, were not, did not play starters minutes last year. But coincidentally, when those two started to play more minutes and when they were inserted into the regular rotation, uh, came right around the time when Brown won seven of their last eight games. So to me, that's a little bit of hidden value right there because you're going to look at their full season stats from last year and say, okay, well, these guys didn't play regular minutes, but they also weren't playing regular minutes when Brown was in their early season struggles. Once you had that, that sort of trio of Errol, Lesba, Cooley um, kind of rotating in with, with Lily and the two bigs uh, was when they played their best ball. And I think that's really important to point out uh, the the, Starting five is is so veteran and, and, you know, just so kind of proven at this point that Brown's what very well might end up being their best player, freshman Jeremiah Jenkins, is probably going to start on the bench. And, and that's really kind of a pretty big luxury, in my opinion, uh, because I would say just about any other year, uh, a talent like him coming in uh, would, would have probably started right away. But... Brown has so much returning and they're all upperclassmen that they're going to have the luxury here of kind of rotating Jenkins in off the bench, though I wouldn't be surprised at all um, if he cracks the starting rotation sooner than later, just based on, you know, the the caliber of recruit he is um, it, it relative to the Ivy League. Like he should be one of the better recruits at, at any I, Ivy school this year. So it would not surprise me if he's sort of in starting for this team sooner and later. And that can only mean good things because the five that the Brown is going to start with the upperclassmen uh, it is essentially their starting lineup from the seven and one run to close the season last year. I guess my concerns here uh, are two concerns. So Kalu Anya is the big that they lose. And when it, when you got into Ivy league play last year and you got into that run of seven of eight to close the season, it was Brown's ability to just be, be super physical on the inside, uh, with Anane and Anya, that that gave them sort of their edge. So now you lose one of those bigs, uh, and, and I, I I guess my I guess my slight concern is it would put more pressure um, on Owasu Anane. Maybe he doesn't finish as well because there was a time last year where you know his touch around the hoop just wasn't as good. Um, I felt like again he was a little bit of a liability offensively, but I'm hoping another year. Uh, is he's able to improve on that. And I think, you know, undoubtedly, the guy is a, a machine at drawing fouls. And again, it was very encouraging watching him shoot free throws down the stretch. Uh, there was a couple of games where, you know, teams were fine putting him at the line. I think he stepped up and went, you know, hit eight of 10, hit seven of nine, was a much better free throw shooter down the stretch last year. And, and I think that could only really help them this year. So, Anya, Kalu Anya was, was Brown's best defensive player. So, yeah, they lose him. Uh, but I do think with what they have returning, they can absolutely still be a solid defensive team. And, again, like I just don't think his absence is going to set Brown back significantly. Uh, I, I think that the mix of players they do have here uh, and, one, and one more year to develop uh, for Anane is going to – offset that uh, a little bit. So as you can tell, as we get to the betting outlook portion of the preview, I am very high on the Brown Bears. Uh, you can see my brown hoodie that I grabbed at the uh, Pizziola Center last year. Cool little venue down there in Rhode Island. Uh, I think Brown has an outside shot to win the Ivy this year, which I don't think you'll hear many say because Princeton and Yale both project to be very, very strong teams yet again. Uh, but Brown being in that four-team playoff uh, for an NCAA tournament spot, that is the Ivy League tournament, the top four teams make it, I, I think is just about a given. And, and it's not, you know, that's that's not easy to get in that tournament. You know, it's an eight-team league. 
Princeton's always good. Yale's always good. Cornell's always in the mix. Harvard's typically in the mix. Um, so not exactly easy to finish top four in this league. And I fully expect Brown to be in the top four. So I want to look at the schedule as we wrap this preview up because I see a very favorable schedule in the non-conference and I see a lot of potential wins here for Brown. So Brown is going to open the year at MVP Arena in Albany, New York against my Siena College Saints who are in a little bit of a rebuild. Uh, you know, first, It'll be the first game of the Jerry McNamara era Obviously, everyone's super excited uh, around the program for Siena, but you know any playable number in that game, I'll, I'll likely look to Brown, just just because I know what Brown's gonna you know they they have coming in there, and I I, I think it could take Siena a couple of games. Uh, obviously, it's a total rebuild. They won four games last year or something. This is the worst worst year in the, the history of the program for Siena, or, or one of them. So it's it's going to be starting from the bottom and you know, that's a winnable game. You you start to look at this schedule again, super favorable for Brown home games against Maine, New Hampshire, Holy cross, sacred heart, Stony Brook, all at home. Uh, They get Rhode Island at home this year, which is a, 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 one of the, uh, you know, it's one of the in-state rivals, Brown, Bryant, Providence and, and Rhode Island, kind of like the, the big four in Rhode Island. All, all sort of rivals. They all play each other on an annual basis. Uh, that game's at Brown this year, so that'll be a you know a, a big home spot for them. Uh, and then they've got a rematch with Bryant on the road. A little bit of revenge. Again, Bryant and Brown play every year. Those are probably the biggest of the two rivals. Uh, and Bryant won that game at Brown last year, so maybe a good spot for revenge for Brown. They also come out to Canisius. Uh, and those are all essentially, like that's like the first 10, 11 games of the year. There's not one game that I just mentioned right there that Brown is not going to, it would be outclassed in any of those games. They are from the Rhode Island game to, you know, the road games at Bryant and Canisius, every game at home, every single one of those games is a winnable game for Brown. And I will be looking to back them in, in any spot where I'm getting a playable number. And I'm certain that Brown is not going to get the market hype that you would expect. So I am I am certain that we're going to get some playable numbers on Brown in that first sort of two months of the season. And Brown is one of the few teams that I'm willing to come out of the gate and start firing on because they're one of the few teams that we're going to talk about in these 30 for 30 previews that it's basically the same team as last year. The roster continuity is there. That doesn't happen that much in college basketball anymore, but it's happening with this team, uh, with this Brown Bears team. You're also going to see Brown go to Kansas and Kentucky in back-to-back weeks. And I think you'll see them as a big underdog in both. Well, I know you'll see them as a big underdog in both those games at Kansas, at Kentucky. But those are in that like weird sort of Christmas window. Sometimes, you know, it's it's probably not going to be a full house. Students are home for the holidays. You, you almost always see one of these big name schools sort of like lay an egg in, in one of those spots as they sort of come out of finals and they're tuning up before the conference season starts. Uh, I think I had a 5% play last year with Yale uh, when they went out to Kansas. And, and I do believe we, we were on the right side there and covered that game. Um, so it's going to be, I, I've got Brown circled for those as well, because you're probably getting a, a monster number uh, with Brown in either of those games. And then it's right in the Ivy league play where again, I think their size and physicality is going to be is going to play in the Ivy. You know, obviously you have some elite teams in the Ivy leagues like Princeton and Yale, but I see Brown being able to to hang with those teams. And then of course Keno Lilly. How far can he take this team? Probably to the NCAA tournament if he's healthy all year, uh, because he truly is one of the best players in this conference. And I think he's underrated. I think if you looked at what he did last year, and he was on a bigger name team. He's getting more hype than than he is coming into this season. So we'll wrap this preview up there. I love this Brown Bears team this season. I think there is going to be plenty of favorable opportunities to play them in November and December. I don't think the books are going to catch on that quickly. Um, I, I They just don't get the name recognition of, of some of these other big teams. Uh, so I'm very bullish on this team. I expect to have a few plays backing them over the course of November and December, and I expect to win those plays. Very good team out of the Ivy this this year in the Brown Bears. 
That's been our Brown preview. Uh, we've got, we'll have 30 of them up by the time college basketball tips off on November 4th. Head on over to the Wager Talk YouTube channel, and they're all in one playlist. You can just go through all of them uh, back to back to back if you want. Uh, hopefully, it helps you prepare for college hoop. Again, these are all teams that I went and saw play in person last year that I have opinions on for my travels and, and, and betting last season. So please like and subscribe. Follow the Wager Talk YouTube channel and keep your eyes out for previews all month of October as we lead up to tip off on November, Monday, November 4th. 